that covers a lot of bases. <laughs> it's, ev it's everything. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I love the compassionate view there too, of, you know, it's, um, I know that I've been busy in times in my life and just multitasking overwhelmed, just, you know, owning a studio and trying to do all the things and help all the people. And then sure. I have been concealed to myself, sort of like, I'm like, man, I know this stuff. Like, how come it's not coming up? But then, you know, it's like just a, a cue for me to drop back into myself and like, mm -hmm. remember my um, innate intelligence. Uh, I just... As I'm talking to you and and um, reading your book, I just I feel this sense of forgiveness and compassion um, and gratitude that comes with Tantra. It's it's um, it's really seeping into my my bones a little bit more. And like what what a gift, especially the way that you present it uh, in your book. And then as I talk to you and it's just like. I'm so excited for you to come in December because then I get to soak it into like the physicality and with the asana and everything, right. um, which uh, I wanted to to mention. I thought it was such a, an amazing, just serendipitous happening with uh, your logo, the <laughs> Lotus, right? Um, I, uh, I'll i just share a quick story of Thrive. So uh, when I was opening up Thrive, I didn't, you know, I, I kind of wanted to use my own funding. I didn't want to borrow money and my credit was like terrible when I was opening and opening up a studio can be pretty expensive. So I paid for everything and then we ran out of money and I was like, Oh, we don't have the floors. Like these are like, we need floors. And, <laughs> uh, like I was like that day or the next day I got a call from a lawyer had gotten an offender bender. And a friend of mine was like, go, go to a lawyer, just, you know, just to be covered just in case of medical bills, mm -hmm. which it was good because I wound up using it. And anyways, I went and, I stepped inside the lawyer's office and he was like, we did it. And I was like, we did. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we won. I was like, oh, it was like three and a half years. I could forgot about it. And oh, he slides wow. me a check for like 4,000 something, the same amount, like almost to the penny oh, my of the God. floors. And when I read about your logo, as far as like the, the, um, the designer getting it back to you and just your jaw dropping, looking in the mirror, seeing the, the five petals and then the four petals inside of it, I was just, yeah. I could feel the magic behind it because it's mm. like the universe is working through people for you and, and for this, yes. this, uh, you know, message and what you're sharing. Mm. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so amazing. Your story about, <laughs> about that, that the, you needed the money and then the money showed up, but in a way that was just surprising to you. And yeah, that was very similar. And um, there's really, there's a wonderful teaching about the hand of Providence that as soon as you commit to something that's in your best interest, like you're following your heart and then you commit to really aligning with that, every force in the universe comes to align with you to make that happen. And it's a beautiful reminder. Like for me, when I did the logo, I knew I wanted, I got the name Ashaya from my tantric teacher. And, um, you know, it means a bow to the heart. So I'm thinking, well, what's an image? So like in my third grade artistic talent, which I still have today, um, I drew a picture of a little house with like an abode with a heart on it and a chimney Aww. smoke coming out. And uh, I showed it to my friends. And, how is this? And they just laughed. So I, said, okay, really? yeah. not... so I hired someone and, um, you know, I had seen a lotus flower that I really liked from another studio. And I said, can you do something like this? And uh, what they came up with was fine, but it just wasn't it. And then um, I said, well, I'm going to keep trying. So I hired, I got the name of someone out in California. She was super expensive, but, you know, they said she was really good. So she, you know, helped and the logo moved, moved along. And then we finally sort of got it nailed down and we put it on t-shirts and all that. Um, I still hadn't really noticed this, but then I put the shirt on uh, as soon as they were done. It was the first time I wore it and I looked in the mirror as I was preparing to teach and my jaw dropped. And what it was, you know, I teach about the five elements. I think I covered that uh, in our last talk. Yes. And the weekend workshop is going to be all on the five elements. But then to get them in the body, we go through the four essentials, open, engage, align, expand, which are really the four, it's the four imprints, like the technique behind every single pose. The whole method is designed in that. And I will explain that and guide people in an experience of that. 
when I come uh, in December so that you can actually feel the, the expanse of sky. You can feel the steadiness of earth in your body. You can feel how the breath moves around obstacles for water and the intense fire of your tapas, like this longing to transform ourselves and to touch and actually live and eat and breathe that freedom. And then the air element is that once we have all that, we just expand into the pose and stretch while staying grounded. So it's really, um, it, and it's anatomically sound because the earth, earth and air, so earth contracts toward the middle and air expands out from the middle. And that is the nature of an eccentric contraction, which is what all the football teams use when they do their yoga. So like if you, if you make a muscle and you contract, there's a contraction, so you do that. Um, so we know that's how you know the muscle will get strong but then if you do an isometric contraction you don't move anything it's iso it's steady and then the muscle gets firm and then the eccentric contractions you make the muscle firm while you eccentric that means you go away from midline so the muscle is firm it's hugged in while it stretches and uh, anatomically it's the safest way to stretch so that the joints actually um are supported, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, anyway, so that triggers the brain to register. Oh, it's safe here. Now I can relax. So in a shy, we relax through engagement, and it is so aligned with the philosophy because we are the agents of grace. Like we are co-participators, but we need to learn how to actually hug in and uh, interact with grace that way. You know, so our, our, indiv our individual sort of being really matters in terms of the universe. It's not just we surrender the universe and it's just a surrender path. It's the blend of my individual effort because what I desire, that's what's steering the ship. Like we're always moving towards what we desire. Right. And so hopefully that desire is aligned with what your heart most deeply desire because that's what you're going to get. Right. And that is the exp the individual nature of this universal energy that has become you in its fullest desire to achieve what it came here for <laughs> that was a mouthful um no it's 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 beautiful though it's it's uh <laughs> you know I, I have found that a lot of people newer to yoga, they either try to intellectualize it, which like <laughs> it's impossible or, or they, they surrender like a little bit too much. They're just like, I just lay here and I just, yeah. I don't yeah. know. And so a method that is going to sort of like hug in and embrace who you are um, while engaging your mind, but also having like, okay, check in with yourself, make sure you're not too up here two down here let's come together right and uh then it's then then comes uh this beautiful alignment with the divine because you're engaged with the intelligence of your like brain but also of your body and your heart it's uh i just love it that's phenomenal oh you said that so well yeah the divine is the totality of the place in the middle between the extremes so between our individual effort and our universal surrender, there's a space that's even given a special name called the Madhya, which means place in the middle. And that's really where the dance of creation lives. Mm -hmm. But back to just finish the logo story. Yeah. So we have those four essentials, open and engage, align, expand, that weave with the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and sky. And so the logo of the lotus, which I kept, I don't know if I can show you, has five petals above the five elements that flow down from the universe because we're all sky babies we're made from elements and stars oh sky babies i love that <laughs> in to these four essentials which are the four petals there which integrate that into our body mm. so when i saw that i said oh my god this is you know there's that no is so way that so perfect just, there, there's no way i could have created this like <laughs> it's completely beyond what I could do. Yeah, and I love how there's that the aspect of the concealment and revealment because here it was in front of you, and you're just like do do do, like getting ready for your thing, and it was like perfect time. It's like now, everybody, now show him, and you're just like, <gasps> and that is like that just kind of encapsulates what you said about the concealment and the joy of revealment for you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 
yeah, how to how to live in a state of wonder and awe. And I think the real practice is when special experiences like that arise, it's it's really wonderful and it's almost easy to feel the sense of interconnection. But it's when we're doing the routine and the mundane uh, day in, day out to be able to sort of see with fresh eyes, like with new eyes. Even when we do the same pose over, I don't know, do you experience that? Like when I'm in my divine center and I do a pose, it feels like for the first time, even though I've done like Parsvakanasana, you know, probably millions of times by now. <laughs> um, our work as yogis and heart followers is to do it as if for the first time. And where do you have to go in your consciousness to live that way? It's, it's, it's really a beautiful contemplation so that we really f like are on this sacred path and we treat everything as divine to try to see it, to live in a state of wonder and awe. Mm. Yeah, looking yeah. at the, the different aspects and, um, you know, one of my favorite things to do when I, I kind of do a blend of mostly uh, the, the masculine structure of Ashtanga, but I've learned so much from different like alignment practices that I incorporate. But when I come to the top of my mat, I think, OK, how can I make this like a game, basically? And I'll give myself like little little prompts to follow, like depending on how I feel. Right. So if I'm feeling kind of like sluggish, like, OK how can I make this enjoyable? Like, mm -hmm. you know, how can I, I don't know, like really ground it to my feet? How can I like engage into, how can I hug myself? Like that's been a huge thing for me is mm -hmm. to, to hug what you're saying about hugging into the joints and then expanding. Cause mm -hmm. you know, my, my path as a yogi, I just sort of like found teachers that I could find and I pieced things together for myself, like a little mosaic of a yogi. And sure. then, you know, then things start to hurt and you're like, oh, why does my elbow hurt every time in Chaturanga? And then you start seeking out teachers. And a lot of times for me, it's been within, but sometimes you meet a fantastical person like yourself and you get like two nuts and things. So it's, um, I just, I really, I'm so happy that we've been doing these interviews, uh, besides everybody else, for me, <laughs> it's, it's, it's lovely because um, it's, it's really showing me like what you're about, how you teach, like your viewpoint. Um, and, and you're so respectful of where um, all this comes from, but you, you definitely kind of like step into the role of the, the teacher as, as an authority because you are. And I, I love that. And you do so with humility and, um, humanness. I just, I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And uh, I appreciate that a lot. And this is what I've been loving getting back into teaching live in person again, because it's been three years. And I was just at a workshop um, in Canada last weekend. And oh my God, to be able to give someone the nuanced alignment technique with a touch, mm. you know, because the language is good, but we're not everyone has like that accurate of proprioception, which means our capacity to know where our body lives in space. Sure. Yeah. So some of the techniques are very subtle. Like I'll say claw, like in downward dog pose, I'll say claw your pads and roots. Well, that's the finger pads here. And the five fingers are the five elements. So if somebody's, and the roots are, are where the finger joins the hand. So if somebody's in downward dog, but they're, uh, you know, their first metacarpal knuckle, which is this, is off the floor, then their shoulder blades will wing like they lose a lot of strength. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say claw your pads and roots. But then I look and I see not everybody's doing it. Like some people have, they don't know they're doing that. And then yeah. I come on, I just lightly keep this knuckle down. And all of a sudden the head of their arm bones pop up and then their heart melts. And you can, I just see people click right into alignment as this one little thing of this little point is, uh, is uh, assisted. So. Yeah, there's a beautiful data exchange by a knowledgeable teacher that comes in with with uh, good intention and you know um, grounded in their body. It's just sort of it, it's just magical how like hearts can speak to each other. 
for example, I've learned from Cheryl, she said uh, she did a Kirtan here at Thrive, I think like a year or two ago. And she yeah. said, you know that when everyone's uh, chanting together, all of our heartbeats kind of sync up. And I just thought that was mm. so beautiful. So it's like, mm. as a as a teacher, it's such a loving act to give touch. And, you know, there's some people that they're, they have an experience like kind, loving touch. And I, you know, for, for me, I used to be so we, we share the sort of, um, journey through shame, <laughs> uh, and, uh, I used to berate myself and I, every practice was just a battle with myself. And mm -hmm. I remember in child's pose, my, my very first 200 hour that I took and I was in child's pose and I like wanted to cry because I was being so mean to myself. And I had a teacher come over to me and just, just put a hand on my back, like, Hey, like you're okay, you're yeah. worthy, and here's some love, and it was just so powerful for me. So yeah. I I love touch, and I was body worker for 15 years. So oh my I'm goodness, so <laughs> that's great, Aaron. Yeah. yeah. So it'll be yeah. wonderful to you know have you here to kind of share your intelligence through hands as well, because yeah, yeah I agree that some some people just understand it that way so much better. Yeah. Yeah, it's good that that's the kinesthetic form of learning. You know, some people are more auditory, some visual and some kinesthetic. So, yeah. oh, yeah, it's beautiful. You know, what you're saying is really um, when we are in our heart, we're closer to the divine. And one of my goals in the practice of Ashaya is to integrate body, mind and heart. And <clears throat> by staying alert, and, you know, when people do my class, like you have to pay attention because the instruction is so refined. You can't just go on autopilot. Mm. And then it's physically challenging. You know, I really work with core and get, like you said, when we were hugging muscles and all that. So it gets your mind, it gets your body. And then the tantric teaching is infused in all of the instruction. And we don't just hug in, but on the earth class, I'll say with steadfastness, hug in. And there's the heart virtue of the earth, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to say with softness, hug in. It's like, no, this is earth, you know. Hug in with like commitment, with dedication, you know. Ooh, with, I like that. With, with tenacity, you know, that's a, <laughs> another good earth heart virtue. And so when I teach, I try to teach the heart of the student. Even though there's all this physical alignment cues are like flying and I give mental cues, you know, but it's really... I think the real passion comes when people do the practice to benefit their heart, to like mm -hmm. increase their happiness, to, to like find the courage inside to say what needs to be said and to move through life, to move into relationship, to move out of relationship sometimes, that courage to not hold back and not keep yourself so small because this life is short. I mean, you know, when I turned 50, I'm way over 50, but like I woke up one day and I was 50 and it was like, oh my God, it's half gone. Like, <laughs> where, did the, where did the first 50 go? You know, it's, it goes by so fast. Mm -hmm. So um, how to savor the time that we have left, you know? There's a, a little uh, excerpt from your book uh, that I think I want to read if I can pull it up really quick. Ah, here it is, if you don't mind. Um, I think Tantra's gift to us is the understanding that we're not here to get it right. We're not here to achieve anything or prove anything. We're not here to fix the problem, but to manage the paradox. We're here to savor the experience we're having. We're here to engage with life in any given moment with whatever life is presenting for us. Um, for better or for worse, there's no wrong way and no right way. There's only your way and the meaning you assign to it. Tantra's question is, are you savoring? Are you? <laughs> I thought that was lovely. <laughs> ah, um, well, Todd, it has been wonderful uh, speaking with you again and just connecting hearts. 
And uh, again, uh, if you are local to the Bradenton area, or I think we have some people actually traveling in from quite a distance, we have Todd Norian in the studio at Thrive Yoga and Fitness from December 1st to the 3rd. Uh, we have, like I mentioned, we're more than halfway sold out. Uh, so maybe have like 10 or 12 spots left. So if you want to get in on that, please uh, reach out to me, Aaron, AaronCoach.com. You can check out ThriveYogaFit.com. And uh, Todd has so many resources, which I'll include in the show notes of how to uh, get more information on him. And uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Todd, for coming on today again. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a delight. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to support the podcast and if it's helping you, please consider writing a review. You can go to iTunes or Google Play, go into the search bar and type in Thrive Yoga Fit Transformational Coaching, scroll down and you can leave a review. This helps other people to find me as well as bumps us up in the search ratings. Also, this podcast is sponsor free, so that means we don't receive anything for doing it. If you feel so inclined and this podcast is helping to support you and you want to return the favor and help to support any production costs of the podcast, feel free to give a donation to a Venmo link, Thrive Yoga Fit or PayPal, Aaron at AaronCoach.com. If you don't have the means, don't worry about it. We're not going anywhere. You're all good. But if you would like to give back, you can give back in those ways. Thank you so much. Namaste.